Maoists, or Naxalites as they're known in India, now exert influence over a third of the Indian subcontinent. In one state alone, Chhattisgarh, police have been powerless to stop a series of shifting and violent clashes between state forces and a strengthening band of Maoist rebels. The Maoists find refuge in the dense forests of Chhattisgarh and they're wary of the media. The commander of this unit would only speak with his back to the camera. The Maos have mined roads, bombed railways, buses, buildings and schools. And they've carried out brutal attacks on villages, sometimes as revenge for betrayals, sometimes simply to intimidate. The government has responded by relocating entire villages, shifting over a hundred thousand people into special camps like this. These camps are protected from the Maoist by a vigilante group called the Sawajadum whose members are now assembled from the displaced villages. So there can be absolutely no, under any circumstances, no justification for the Salvajitans. From the ranks of the Salvajidom are picked the Special Police Officers, or SPOs. Armed by the state, and given the most rudimentary training, the SPOs are then put in the front line in the fight against the Maos. I was told these people are free to come and go as they please. But in truth, that's not an acceptable choice anymore. If they go back to their home villages, they risk the anger of the Maos for leaving in the first place. But remaining here puts them at the mercy of their protectors, the Sawajadum and the police. And that's not a comfort to anyone. I asked the Salwaja Dorm about stories I'd heard of villagers being forced into the camps. Serious tensions are tearing at the government relocation camps, with some villagers wishing to leave and others in training as SPOs. 
With villager turning against villager, this conflict has become what is essentially a civil war. This young woman, assigned to protect her neighbours, may have to turn her gun on her old village friends who have been recruited by the Maoists. And she's on a death list too. Becoming a special police officer means becoming a prime target for the Maoists. In March last year, rebels overran this isolated Chattisgarh police station, killing 55 policemen and making off with their guns and ammunition. 39 of the victims were special police officers. With attacks and reprisals and claims of violence on all sides, some tentative steps are underway to establish peace and justice. This is the Polom Pele camp, run by the Sawajadun. Today, a delegation from a government-sponsored human rights team has come to speak to the villagers about alleged atrocities by the Sawajadun. This heavily armed convoy must seem intimidating to villagers who don't want their discussion monitored by police. The police will keep their distance. But the superintendent's promise that his officers would stay away is clearly misleading. As the villagers lodged their complaints, I filmed armed police and Sawajadum looking on and listening in. This man told me that after arriving in a Sawajadum camp, he and his fellow villagers were regularly beaten by the militia. When they decided they couldn't take the beatings anymore, they ran away and returned to their village. The Sawajadum tracked them down and singled out an old man for public execution. The Sawa Jadun then killed all the livestock, destroyed their crops and burnt down their houses. As a result, 15 young people from the village decided to join the Maoists. A two and a half year old boy and a young woman have been shot and killed. There is no part of India where you can say, yes, at least here the rule of law prevails absolutely and without compromise. There is no part of India where this happens.